Hey everybody, welcome back to an Unknown of Thoughts to Saku Guy. Gonna be doing an unboxing and review over a Figma that has really slipped uh, by the first release. So this is a re-release of this figure. This is Joker from Persona 5. So stay tuned, let's check him out. Alright everybody, welcome back. Let's check out the Persona 5 figure of Joker. This is the Figma of it with its Good Smile Company exclusive, like, special bonus. Now, I missed the first one because I wasn't really into Persona 5 or even Persona in general. I'm very Persona noob when it came to this series. It was kind of recommended to me as a, uh, from a couple friends uh, as they were saying, if you like anime and you like RPGs, you pretty much will like Persona. And I think they're right because I was watching a couple of people play it and I really liked it and that's really caught my attention. And one uh, character that caught my attention that's what I thought was really cool was actually Joker himself. I really liked his character design. So when I saw the re release went up for pre-order, I jumped on it. And little did I know he was going to become a Super Smash Brothers character. Absolutely blew my mind at the Game Awards. I think it blew a lot of people's minds because when they showed the trailer, a lot of people's impressions were they thought that they were bringing Persona 5 to the Switch, which, you know, completely reasonable and understandable thing to do because uh, it's got a very nice art style and it's not overly killer on it. Anyways, before we dive into that, um, let's hope that they do because that's actually kind of cool. Uh, Joker himself, he's a really cool character. I'm actually, uh, I think he's definitely one of the coolest characters in, in uh, that series. And besides uh, a couple others that I think look, look really cool. But uh, he reminds me of Hay from Darker Than Black a little bit. Uh, you know, man in a lot of black with a mask on, you know, kind of like assassin feeling. I think that's really, really cool. So let's get into checking him out and how is he as a figure. So, sorry for that noise. <laughs> um, what's really cool is that he came out and he's in Smash. Now I have a fresh idea that was also requested from a couple fans uh, to make a follow-up shot uh, for one of my shots that I made uh, here. I'll show you here. That's a shot I made recently uh, regarding a parody for the Smash uh, DLC characters before Joker was announced. And now Joker is going to play a role in uh, I don't want to really spoil it, but he's, there's going to be a follow-up photo very likely with him in it. So uh, stay tuned, follow my social medias if you want to see that creation. Anyways, get out of the way. Let's get into opening him up. We got the typical size uh, Figma box here with him in it. And let's get cracking. I love the uh, the font they choose and the style for Persona. It's, like a, it's a very, very interesting art style. I really, really like it. And, uh, I, God, I gotta get into that game. I have the game. I haven't actually gotten into it. And so this is a definite purchase of a character of, I know I'm gonna like the game, I know I'm gonna like the character, and I like the character design. So that's why I jumped onto this. And now I have even more of an excuse because now he's a Smash character, and I love having uh, figures of Smash characters. So this is a major, major, like, oof. Cool purchase, very unexpected, because when I pre-ordered this, it was before they announced, uh, uh, was it Joker as a Smash character. So I, I can't wait to see what he's gonna do as a, uh, you know, I'll just go for this figure. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with him as, a, like his, um, I guess his fighting style and everything. It's gonna be really cool. Okay, so uh, we're gonna save the bonus for the end. I already know what this is, I think. I'm not sure, I actually can't remember. But let's go into opening him up and check him out. Just looking at him, his style and you know his weapons and whatnot, like he's gonna be such a cool character to play with. Oh man, so unexpected for Smash Brothers. So unexpected. Let's go straight into the character. You got his trench coat 
in a very nice design and it looks like did they do the ball joint design yes they did all right so let's put here a classic t pose and his coat has ball joints in it which is awesome because it allows you to put the coat in different formations and to get out of the way of everything and it's not connected together uh, very very nice feature they've been including in a lot of modern figmas uh, you'll notice over time they have gotten better with that and I really, really like that feature because it's maybe something that's overlooked, but when you're doing figure photography and doing posing, pop his head out very carefully because I got the plastic here. But anyways, uh, what I was saying about um, when it comes to doing figure photography and doing posing, or if you're someone who just likes to do a very, very intricate pose uh, on your shelf, having something that has more articulation means a lot and adding the articulation i would see even cleverly hidden um for his coat is really cool uh they hid the ball joints very carefully for this coat too they're actually even if you move the coat flap up you really can barely see the ball joints there so good small company is geniuses with this stuff and people who complain about how expensive figmas are I'm not saying that it's cool that they cost so much, but uh, Figma's, people have to understand, they have evolved, and they have changed for the better in terms of how much articulation and clever articulation. So people always try to compare to like other companies like uh, Revel Tech or uh, Figure Arts or anything in terms of price. They have a lot of articulation and even sometimes better articulation, but Figma has what I like to call clever articulation and it may not guarantee be better articulation, even though sometimes they are. Uh, they like to hide their joints a little bit. They look more aesthetically pleasing. Figmas are always known for their aesthetically pleasing nature. So well, even when it comes to doing the articulation here for his coat, uh, you'll notice his shoulders, they did a very nice little flare at the end there and the ball joint rolled into it so that the, when the coat's up, it still looks like it's part of the coat. Like that's a hard thing to overcome. Like I can't even describe it in person. It's one of those things once you experience it when you articulate the shoulder in there, um, like it just rubs even when you're putting the arm up in there. That's how tight the tolerance is when they designed this character for its articulation and when it goes into full extend it connects with the shoulder again and it looks flush with the jacket like come on that's so cool that's the clever articulation so anyways um there are some drawbacks to clever articulation though whenever you have an arm you want to come in to bring in so when you're going from this position and bringing over in it kind of bumps and it stops at a forward position so when it comes to bringing the arm over and you want to touch the other side you do have limited articulation so you're kind of in a position like this so the arm's going to straighten out and it's going to bump there instead of being able to go further in and cross over uh, so there are some negatives to how good it looks, but the thing is it's enough articulation where it's not a negative If it was a problem, then it would be really really bad and Figma wouldn't be good at all So it's definitely enough articulation. So now let's see with the legs because we have This weird bottom tailcoat thing going on here and it looks like it's got enough flexibility to it It's not interfering with his leg. That's really good. Oh Yeah, he's got great leg motion there despite that little tailcoat piece. Let's move the tail, uh, the trench coat up and let's put his leg back. And we have a decent leg motion there so he can do a crazy nice wide walk because Joker's got some nice slender long legs. Great for doing like his, uh, his positions where he does like his little sprint poses. Very slender legs for that. Uh, so you definitely wanna have a lot of leg motion and it's there. A lot of leg motion, love it. And I like the fact that they have, for character design, he's got all this black on him, and then he's got this red gloves that stick out. And it looks absolutely stellar. So now, now that we're done checking out how awesome this character is with his articulation, um, we do have a slight issue with his torso. All right, so it's down to the nature of the coat. This is definitely a drawback, but they try to, I guess, cleverly move it which is 
really weird. All right, so he doesn't have, normally you would have right around the bust area, you would have the articulation point here. So your upper torso would rock, like on your uh, spine would. So what they did was on here, they lowered it so that he has a articulation point right above the waist. So they have the articulation point right around your your L discs on the lower part of your articulation and they didn't do the upper torso. So now he has a lot kind of like, I, know, I guess he has a lot focusing down there when it comes to movement, which I guess looks a little awkward, but it makes the upper part of his character for the, the actual sculpt look really really good they didn't because they didn't have to worry about articulation up in the center part so all of it is down here right above the the waist of the pelvis and everything that's a very weird position for the uh, articulation to be because normally yeah it would be right around the bust area I don't I have I don't think I've seen uh, many uh, figures like that when it comes to uh, for figmas just something I'd like to point out there. Um, I don't know if it's a major negative yet. I would probably have to do some uh, crazy articulation for figure positions, for uh, some photography, uh, and maybe I'll see then, but I don't see a negative yet. But it does hinder articulation just a tad, but it does make his lower really good. Look look at this. I've got his, his waist with his lower. Like he can almost, I'm not even gonna say it, but he can almost do some things he's not supposed to do. Look at this. He's in full sick mode and he's not even bending his, he's not even bending his legs. That's his torso, he just broke his spine. <laughs> so it's got its unique characteristics to it. Oh man, I just like flexed his jacket. I'm gonna put that back in. All right, so he's got, ooh man, I really gotta put that back in there. Yeah, it definitely flapped up above the coat. There we go. All right, so that center torso piece has a big pro. It is extremely flexible. He can sit down on his spine and his butt without bending his legs at all. It's like, you feel so bad for his spine. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, he's gonna have some great flexibility despite that torso, which is good because he has a long coat. He's got the trench coat. So I don't see anything that would raise a red flag as a negative here. Very cool. All right, so we're gonna put Joker down to the side for a second. Um, I don't see any issues with his sculpt. His hair looks awesome, his paint looks awesome. He really, really stands out as a good looking character. So let's check out what he comes with. So he's got his default faceplate that he comes with. is very neutral, very, very plain looking face. Which is good, you always want a neutral one. It's great for changing expression for how you're displaying or doing photography. So we have two alternate faces, which is hitting my minimum. I love the minimum of three faces. And we have one here that is, I would call it devious. Uh, it's got some shifted eyes with a really, really like grinning type looking face, which is very good. Cause it can be used as a mischievous action uh, face. And then we have, what's this other one here? We have a more more sinister neutral. Uh, he's got a slightly aggressive, angry uh, face, but his eyes are open and his face is very, very determined, but slightly elevated up to a smirk almost, but without smirking. So I will show you, you'll have to see in a photo to understand what I'm talking about, but that is definitely some interesting face expression. So we have some very unique expressions here, which is A plus, love that. We got three as a minimum and they're diverse, very diverse, which is great for expression. Love it, thank you. Um, and then without even going there, we all know Joker for his mask. And what's so awesome about Figma is, cause we can use this with every face plate. Figma has the beauty of front hair pieces coming off. So we take and we find the pinch point. We pull off the front hair piece and we put in the front hair piece here with the mask on it. Got a nice snug fit. And that looks wonderful. The sculpting on it is absolutely amazing to the point where the eyes line up in the holes, amazing. 
So it has an amazing attention to detail on it. Uh, I can see him, this being a very, very important uh, figment now. Especially for the fact that he popped up in Smash and he is now a Smash character. Um, I don't know what his market value is at the moment, but if you didn't get him, I'd get him soon. Because this looks a lot better than I expected. Uh, it's a lot better articulated than I expected, a lot better painted than I expected, and what he comes with so far is a lot better than I expected. So, let's keep raising these expectations here even higher, because, so now we have a great figure, cool articulation, interesting articulation, three face plates, and a separate hair piece which has his mask. So, what else does he come with? Alright, let's get down to it. We already got the usual plastic bag that you get with your authentic Figmas. We have instruction manual, which we don't need. We have a base, and we have a extra piece. Interesting. Uh, this is a very, very unique looking adapter. So normally with base stands, you have, it's a like a 45 degree angle, um, starting from the bottom here of my finger, it goes up and it goes into like a 45 for a typical adapter for Figma base stands. So now we have this really long bottom here, which goes to a 45. I'm guessing because the hole is so high and it's on his trench coat and you want to like I guess keep it close to the body or something I'm not entirely sure this is definitely one of the most unique looking right angle adapters or 45 de degree adapters I've seen included with a Figma so far and I've got so many Figmas that I've seen a lot of them all right so the figure that I'd like to point that out that's a, another unique different thing about this Figma we do have Joker's cat persona here. This figure is included as a standard, included with the figure. So, can we pull off the head? Yeah, we can. Let's pull off the head, get the plastic out of the way, let's put that in the box there. And let's slide the head back on. All right, so the head only articulates on the, the cat here. He's got his little mask on him, little bandana. He sculpted nicely, painted nicely, and he's very, very simple. Now, I don't know much about this character, so I can't describe too much about the actual character himself in terms of accuracy or anything like that, but I can tell you about how the sculpt and the painting looks. And for what he is, he looks very simple, and he has a simple uh, joint in which he slides in so he can turn his head slightly and it doesn't seem like it's supposed to because I think it's cogged but he has slight head wiggle room which is interesting uh, so it's don't expect really much articulation or anything from this character here it's meant for display and he does come with a mini stand it's a right angle clear pole that goes in his back which doesn't want to go in very easily Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a fight to get in. I will probably deal with that later. I don't want to fight it. I'll probably actually take his head off when I do it. Um, so be careful with that. You don't want to break your figure when you do it, putting uh, stands in their backs. I have had a couple of them that have given me a good fight. Okay, so we have two weapons included with him, and that is the last of what's in the plastic here. So we're going to put the plastic to the side and review the weapons. So we have his pistol here, and it does look like a very, very basic, I would say a more of a, it's hard to describe what kind of pistol this looks like. Its chamber is very 1911-ish, but the hammer area goes back a little bit further than what a 1911 would look like. So I'm trying to decide on a type of pistol, but I can't think of a pistol that has that type of hammer range. Uh, so this is definitely a unique looking pistol. And I would say the closest when it comes to like the barrel formation, everything like that, it's like a modified version of a 1911. It's painted okay. And it has grips that stand out. They're painted like, I guess a wood color. And there's not too much extra detail to it, but you'll know that it is a pistol. Nice little inclusion there, but the beauty of this is, is his knife. And his knife, ironically, as this is, reminds me a little bit of Hay from Darker Than Black. 
Now the difference is the fact that, yes, this does have the hole in the center, just like Hayes' um, dagger from Dark and the Black, instead of it being like a fork, like the run from uh, that Hayes knife, Joker's knife here, he has a pointed up straight one and it has a, uh, a metal guide accent through the actual blade. So that has a very nice, new, unique look to it. It's a nice looking dagger. It's painted wonderfully and it's sculpted wonderfully. So they did a cool job on this and you can see through the hole in the center. It's not just like a painted uh, separate one. So it actually looks like it belongs. Very good job on this. So to come to think of it when it comes to him as a Smash character, I can see him being very sprinty, very like chic or something, uh, very fast. He's gonna be like a sleek assassin. He's gonna have a pistol for ranged attacks and he's going to have his dagger, which is gonna be really cool, besides also punching it, punches and kicks. And then also determining what special moves he may have from the game, which I know that he has, you know, he can summon his persona and whatnot. I don't know exactly what those moves are. I can definitely see some of those either being his smash ultimate or his, uh, his I would say his special attacks, which would be your alternate attacks. Uh, so we'll see how those work, and I'm really excited to see how they are. So when I go overall for the Joker Figma that's included here, um, the last thing we can look at that we have is his hands. And you guys know how uh, judgmental I am on the inclusion of hands. So let's see just what they are and what's included here and if it's good enough. That's the last thing we gotta go over. So for the hand, we have his default ones that are included on the figure are his clenched fists. He has open palm hands, only the style that is like with the fingers spread. He doesn't have the flat ones. Uh, so none of those, just open palms, which is good. Um, they're a little bit different than the typical ones you would see for the females. So they definitely are custom sculpt for this. Because if you notice when the ones with open fingers, they're a little more daintily. Uh, these ones have open palm, very basic, with big knuckles, big fingers. So they're definitely not a copy paste for the hands, which is good. We have two pole hands. Uh, as everyone, if you know me, I call them pole hands, which are you have the hand, which has your hand cupped round, which can hold a 1 12th scale accessory in the shape of a pole. And that's a lot of things. A lot. You can hold almost anything with a pull hand. So pull hands are a staple important for any action figure or especially a Figma. And then we have one extra hand there which is clearly for his pistol because he has the finger in a trigger finger position which is perfect. So we have, I would say, our minimum requirement for hands because we have fists, open palm, pull hands, and one hand for his pistol. So we have, I would say, I guess enough. And I'm pretty sure the knife is just gonna use a pull hand. It doesn't have a custom hand for that. So we have definitely a minimum. Is it good? Mm. Is it acceptable? Yes. So we have enough. We aren't lacking too hard. I would have preferred if we would have had at least, I guess, two of the flat finger open palmed or something. It's just something else in there for variety, but we at least have our minimum. That is important, and thank you for at least meeting the minimum. So we have enough for the hands, and uh, especially because the thing is they're painted red, so they're unique. We can't really mix and match unless I get the alternative black hands, uh, like from the uh, Tommy Tech line. I might be able to use those. Uh, it just pulls away from the originality of the fact that he's supposed to have red hands. So we have three faceplates, which is perfect. We have a great figure in general, alternative hairpiece, two weapons, and just enough hands. And then we also have the little cat included, which is a nice little touch, which didn't need to happen, but it's there. And now we get to check out the bonus accessory. So let's see what this bonus is. And I think it's an alternative for the cat. And it is. All right, so. Let's see what expression it is. And it's a very, very anime-esque, I can tell you right now, if you have not already seen this yet. So if you don't know what the Good Smile Company exclusive uh, items are, uh, for Figma they have exclusive items specifically you can purchase at either, I think, pop-up shops like vendors or anything like that for uh, conventions, or you can order them online, especially if it's online exclusive. 
uh, where they have their specific online shop. The only thing that sucks is the price on the online shop is very expensive and also the fact that they have uh, very strict shipping. Uh, a little pricey, but it's definitely worth it because it's flat rate. So if you have multiple figures, you only pay the same price, which is awesome. Anyways, it is a very uh, anime-esque looking face for the cat. He's got star eyes, uh, as if, you know, in reaction to something. So he's got expression. So it's a nice little addition if you are a fan of the cat figure, uh, that you have an alternative expression for the cat. Big A plus there, it's another piece of expression. Sad it was exclusive, but also I think the cat himself was a add-on to this package that was not necessary. So how do I wrap this whole figure in, in general? This is definitely going to be a, a sought after figure, especially after the announcement of Smash Ultimate. He's wonderful in terms of an action figure, but also if you're a fan of Persona, you're gonna love this figure. Lots of expression, uh, enough hand, uh, uh, hand shapes for different expression there uh, and then you have two different hair pieces from his, uh, his face just general exposed and also his mask and two weapons perfect absolute perfect figma there it wraps up as a well-rounded figure so I'm very happy with purchase this I can't wait to do some shots for it look forward to that and I hope you get your hands on one before I don't know if they're gonna go up in price I hope they don't I hope that people can easily get these especially since this is a re-release so this is a second batch firm and they're no stranger to releasing third waves so especially since he's now a smash figure um, could be possible that people request enough that he gets a third release so let's see how it works out and I hope you guys enjoyed this I'm very surprised with this figure so uh, until the next time you guys see me Thank you so much for watching and stay in Orthodox.